I'm here in Wittenberg, Germany, and today is October 31st, Reformation Day, and I am here to discuss what is the Reformation and what it means for Lutherans today. So in order to really understand what we're talking about with Martin Luther and, and Lutheran doctrine, we have to understand the context of the Protestant Reformation. And it all starts with Pope Leo X. Basically, he's a very lavish man. He once said that, you know, God in, has given the papacy, so let's enjoy it. He loved a strong, intense lifestyle of luxury, and thus he wanted to refurbish the famous St. Peter's Basilica, but he didn't have the money, so he introduced this brilliant plan to steal the money from the local people of Europe that followed the papacy. And that was a thing called indulgences, as seen here. And a particular salesman, John Tetzel, came to Wittenberg in the electorate of Saxony in 1516 in order to sell these indulgences. However, there was someone else in Wittenberg, Germany, that was former lawyer turned monk, Martin Luther. Now, he had a lot of opinions about the church, in particular the way Catholic Church was run, especially after his visit to Rome, where he thought it was a complete debauchery, with the Pope having wives and children and dying of syphilis, which is things that pious men should not be doing. Martin Luther saw this sale of indulgences which essentially function as an express shipping for Amazon Prime to heaven. Essentially, your ancestors' souls, your friends' souls, your soul. Uh, if you don't want to be stuck in purgatory, the middle ground between heaven and hell, while you wait to outlive your punishments of your worldly sins, you can expedite the process with an indulgence. And Martin Luther thought this was the most ridiculous thing, because one, it's not anywhere in the Bible, and two, it's clearly just a scam to trick people and make them feel ashamed and afraid and get their money. And it was an expensive thing to buy at the time. Essentially, you're spending half a year's wages on a piece of paper with a little stamp from the Pope that says, you're good. And Martin Luther said, there's no way to buy your way out of damnation. In fact, he had very different beliefs from the actual church in Rome on how the church should function. One day, going up to November 1st, All Saints Day, the day right before, All Saints Day Eve, right here at the Stadtkirche, he nailed 95 theses to the door. Uh, specifically, these doors at the Schröderskirche here in Wittenberg. Uh, now, not these actual doors, the real ones were burned down in the 1700s in a fire. These are a gift from the King of Prussia who uh, inscribed the 95 Theses onto them into the new iron version. To indicate his opinions on the papacy and how the Catholic Church was being run. Now, the Electorate of Saxony, uh, who essentially had this very vast collection of religious Catholic relics, had people coming in from far and wide to go visit these relics and, and obtain some greater enlightenment and maybe some uh, absolution of their sins. And when they came to the door of the church, very common, teachers at the university, monks at the university, would nail what they're teaching about to the door. And they saw what Martin Luther was nailing. And it changed a lot of opinions. His ideas at the time were incredibly radical. To say that the Pope himself has no actual biblical jurisdiction. Martin Luther's ideas caught on about the Pope and about indulgences and about a lot of crazy ideas for the time. And with the invention of the printing press by Johannes Gutenberg, they were spread even further. And because of that, people had ideas about reforming and things. And of course, that's caught on to the Pope, William the Tenth, and also the Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, Charles the Fifth, who being 19 at the time and ruling over pretty much half the world, was not a strong fan of Luther's radical beliefs. Thus, he called upon the Diet of Worms. Essentially, at the Diet of Worms, Luther was tried for heresy against the Catholic Church, and 
was found guilty. And a couple years later, the Pope excommunicated him. But by that time, he had already moved on. He had essentially written several books. I mean, look at them. Several books that had the foundations of a new kind of church. The Protestant church, or more specifically, the Lutheran church. The church that I am a part of. The early 1500s were a time of great revolutionary change here in most of Western Europe and specifically Germany. You have the influences of the humanist movement from the Renaissance in Italy coming in, things like the scientific revolution. People are learning about anatomy and the stars and how everything seems to work together. And it only makes sense that someone would make the logical leap to question religion. And that's exactly what Luther does. The 95 Theses were mainly made to question the sale of indulgences and criticize some aspects to reform the Catholic Church. They by no means were meant to start the Protestant Reformation. However, it gradually grew into that. He started writing books against the Pope and against many other people in the Catholic Church, sort of stand up against the Catholic system and their grip on Christianity in Western Europe. Eventually, Luther's ideas got bigger than himself and spread throughout all of Germany. And there were calls for not only religious reform, but political reform as well. Of course, Luther was backed by the small Caldic League of Protestant Princes, which is the coolest name for anything ever, against the actual Holy Roman Imperial government under Emperor Charles V. And you might be questioning, why would these people who, you know, benefit from the system be supporting Luther? Well, because mainly they didn't like Charles. He was 19, he's running half the world, and majority of people were not a fan of him. So to get back at him, they back this revolutionary thought process. However, revolutionary is a strong word, because he did not support some of the more radical members, especially the German peasants, who looked at religious equality and able to all read the Bible and understand the Bible and not just have it interpreted in Latin by preachers. They viewed this as well, if the Bible can be equal, so should we. Which vastly changed what people thought about here in Europe. And the Peasant Revolt became the biggest revolt in European history until the French Revolution, where people were constantly uh, rebelling against local monarchs and were brutally crushed. And you'd think Martin Luther would side with the noble peasants, but no, he did not. He ended up backing the same small called the League of Protestant Princes that helped him hide from the Holy Roman Imperial government. The plurality of modern Lutherans all follow Luther's basic teachings. That means everyone should be able to read the Bible in their own basic language, and everyone should be able to free to interpret the Bible for what they believe it is. And that is the fundamental core belief of what being a Lutheran is on paper. But I decided to visit a couple of church services here in Wittenberg to analyze what Luther's teachings have evolved into. The man himself is only one person, but his thoughts and ideas are spread throughout time. And what have they become now in Wittenberg and across the world? Okay, well, we made it, officially. We have done four church services. One, two, three, four, uh, as you saw. And, of course, now it's time to sum up what they all meant in three simple things. Overall, no matter where you are, Lutherans have some pretty similar things they do. They always wear red for Reformation Sunday. They will always have coffee after service. And of course, they end everything with also with you. 
and Martin Luther's main philosophies of the Bible being translated out of Latin and, you know, con transubstantiation are all still there. But I find three major concepts as themes that persist throughout majority of every Lutheran service I went to, and I went to four. And those are the themes of grace, acceptance, and love. And those three themes are vital to understanding what it means to be a Lutheran today. The Lutheran theology, of course, starts with everything Martin Luther started regarding indulgences. Don't buy an indulgence, unlike me, who just bought an indulgence. He said the only true path to salvation is only through belief. Not by purchasing an indulgence, not by doing good acts. And what modern Lutheran teaching does is it follows that same structure, believing in grace, acceptance, and finally, love. I mean, look at the Lutheran symbol. It's a heart with a cross in the middle. Throughout my several sermons I had to listen to, there's key themes that always pop up. Whether they be in English or in German, the same concepts are reiterated. When Martin Luther first translated the Bible from Latin into German, he had a lot of options to choose for, for the word grace. Now, if you know anything about the German language, you should know that they love very specific words for specific things. And the word grace was no exception. There's multiple kinds of grace in Germany around 1517. And the most important two were the grace a parent shows a child and the grace a judge shows a prisoner. And Luther very specifically chose to use the grace a parent shows a child to have an unconditional love of their people. And that's what Luther thought the Bible meant, unlike the original Catholic teachings. And I think one of the most important facets of everything, whether it be all the sermons I went to, all the songs and hymns I had to sing, there was one moment that stuck out to me in particular. And I went to a regular service at the Stadtkirche where Luther preached on a Sunday. It was not the Reformation service, it was not the English language service, it was a regular German service for people who live in Wittenberg. And what did they do? They performed a baptism. I was very confused. Uh, my German is not very good in terms of understanding baptismal sayings, so I was confused most of the time. However, I did understand a very important phrase after the priest baptized the boy. In German, he specifically said, they kommen in der Kirche Gottes das Haus der Liebe, which essentially translates to, welcome to the Church of God, the house of love. And that's essentially what Martin Luther is trying to teach. His teachings may not have been directly about that, but his theology, his thought process, and his ideas have spread into that and what being a Lutheran means today. The greatest thing Martin Luther reformed was the Catholic belief of shame and fear and total damnation. That you have to do good acts, you have to buy things to repent for the sins you do, and you should be fearful and ashamed of your actions in the eyes of God. And Luther took that and said, all you need to do is believe, and he will love you, and you will love him. And that's the relationship Luther was trying to preach. And that's what Reformation is all about. That's what the Lutheran faith is all about. The love and acceptance and the grace of God. Overall, as a deep lover of European history and German culture and being a Lutheran, Wittenberg is one of the greatest places in the world to experience all of it. And Reformation Day is the best time to be here. Yes, I bought a hat. Thank you for noticing. But overall, I had a fantastic trip. I'd highly recommend it if you ever come here. And I liked it so much, I'm gonna make a montage about all the great things you can go see. And yes, before you say anything, I'm aware the song I'm gonna use is not a Reformation song, it's a Holden Evening Prayer song, but I like it anyway.
God of daybreak, God of shadows, God that light our hearts anew. In the stars that grace the darkness, in the blazing sun of dawn, in the light of peace and wisdom, we can hear your quiet song. Love that fills the night with wonder, love that warms a weary soul, love that bursts all chains asunder, set us free and make us Let us each reflect your love.